Hi everybody, how are you doing? Welcome to the serverless coffee break. Today I've got my cup of coffee and today it's brought to us by Smoky Bird. So these are this is some beans that were given to me by my DA friend and colleague Ben Smith in London. Really good beans, Smoky Bird, so I check those out. So today uh, what I'm doing is I'm bringing in a guest, Emily Shea. She has uh, been building some amazing tools in serverless and some great websites. And I really wanted to learn more about how she learned all of these things. So she's going to talk to us talk to us about what she's been building. So welcome, Emily, and thanks for joining us. Awesome. Thanks, James. Super excited to be here. Great. Um, so what is your background? Yeah, so my background is uh, pretty far from technology, I would say. <laughs> I uh, have mostly studied uh, Chinese language, uh, and then I came to AWS uh, by way of uh, Amazon retail. Uh, my first kind of experience with technology was was playing around with with Python on Code Academy when I was uh, kind of on the retail side, but looking over at AWS and saying, "Wow, that looks fun." I'm kind of studying like Cloud Practitioner and and all those things, uh, and that was probably in in 2017. Mm -hmm. Um, and then now I'm, I'm about a year and a half into my role in AWS, where I do uh, business development for serverless ISVs. Uh, in my free time, I've kind of continued the hobby of uh, building my own serverless applications. Yeah. So what was your first serverless project? Oh, probably made, oh, I actually made a silly little thing where it uh, it will show you like a random greeting and put like the call a weather API for your location when you hit like a certain web page. Uh, so just super basic ways to kind of get going with, with API Gateway. But um, since then, I've kind of, what I would say like my longest running and uh, most, this project's grown in complexity over time has been um, the, the Chinese daily vocab application. Yep, yep. And so that one, um, what basically what it is today is that users can go on and uh, they can subscribe to uh, Chinese vocab. They get daily emails at the level that they select. Uh, they can go back on my website and they can review uh, words that they've seen over the past uh, couple weeks. And then they can also uh, kind of export those out. And I want to have an ability uh, in the future for them to, to generate their own quizzes for stuff that they've seen. Uh, and so it's really cool to be able to kind of trace that application all the way back to, to super early on when I was just playing with, with API Gateway or kind of whatever else I was getting started with. Um, the application actually started out where um, I was personally thinking like, hey, I'd love a way to, to have more Chinese and be able to practice more Chinese in my, my daily routine. Uh, so I put together just um, a, a single Lambda that would, would send uh, words to, to SNS topic that I was subscribed to that was triggered on a daily CloudWatch event. Um, and so that was kind of the the original, just like like three service implementation of that. Uh, and then since then, um, it's just grown to this this very large scale project with um, a lot of complexity. A uh, couple of Dynamo tables that I'm using in addition to, to S3 for for storage. A uh, couple API gateway endpoints using SES to to push out emails to my subscribers. Uh, currently, I'm up to about 85 subscribers, which is way, way bigger than I would have expected building kind of that, that one Lambda. And um, so it's been super cool to build something that like I found really useful and then has been useful for, for everyone else. Uh, and so I have just recently built a uh, data analytics pipeline so that I can take my 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 Dynamo table that shows my my subscribers and kind of subscriber activity, and um, I'm right I'm uh, using a Lambda that will uh, do like a kind of scan of that, put that in S3, and then I have a quick site dashboard that that reads from that S3 bucket on a weekly basis, uh, so I can kind of track where my subscribers are. So just continuing to add like features and, and complexity as as it grows and as I'm learning new technologies. Yeah, so it's really been amazing to watch the application grow over the last few months. But when you go back to the very, very beginning when you first started building it out, what did you find was the hardest set of problems? What were the things that you stumped on when you first started? So I think going kind of way, way back, I think for someone that's kind of really new to, to technology, it's some of those like just really fundamental tools that are, are in it, concepts that are hard to grasp. Like if I think about the number of like tangled messes of like Git that I have made, where I've just kind of worked myself into this like hole of like, oh, uh, like how do I get out of this? And so I think some of, some of those concepts are the hardest to get at the beginning. But then once you kind of have a couple like fundamental like skills and like a tool chain that you're really happy with, um, I feel like you get just off and running and can go. Um, and so I think that uh, some of the, like, the later stuff that I've gotten into that's been challenging has been some of those larger scale refactors. Uh, so there's been a couple throughout this project over the past like year or so that I've been running it. Um, I went from from kind of vanilla JavaScript to, to building everything in Vue. 
I initially was relying a lot on SendGrid for my for my email send and contact management, but then I built my own custom backend for that recently. Uh, and then the most recent change that I did was I added uh, traditional character support. So now uh, uh, subscribers can go in and subscribe to traditional or simplified and kind of see that reflected in the UI and in their emails. Um, and so I think the coolest thing, though, was that once I was kind of off and running with these these tools and these services that I felt pretty comfortable with, um, it was really easy to like take components of those. Like once I already had one Dynamo table, uh, super easy to be able to know how to like, okay, this is how I define that in SAM and this is how I interact with it and just copy and paste from, from other pieces of code that I've written in the past. Um, so it's very kind of reusable and it's easy to, to build stuff with stuff that I already know, but yeah. continuing to kind of look for new new challenges and new new stuff to learn. So what I really like about this project is I think it mirrors a lot of really real life projects and corporations where you build something and you think that's it. And then you start adding more and more things that you'd never planned you know, to do at the beginning. How did you find that with serverless when you were adding these features in terms of making it fit into what you'd already been building? Super easy. I mean, I think that there's like a lot of kind of that that flexibility of the, the components that you're you're already using. Um, and so I think that that was, uh, like I said, like now that I'm kind of getting into like some of these like later features that I have this this core like backend that I'm that I've uh, built out over time. I feel like it's super easy to kind of tack on this to it. Like for example, my like my analytics pipeline. I feel like that was really straightforward to kind of get going with the the Dynamo table that I already had. Um, like didn't have to touch that. Basically, just kind of started started running a, a lambda that would that scan it and then uh, kick it out. So that was pretty straightforward. Yeah, so the analytics pipeline is something I, I think is a really cool feature because I think that not many people know you can use QuickSight this way. It's just very easy to, to put your data into S3 and connect this dashboard. So what you managed to build there was pretty pretty impressive. I've put on the screen here uh, the link to your uh, website, emshade.com, so people can have a play with some of these things because you have that blog as well that explains many of the steps that you went through and also a link to your website where you can really see a lot of this. So definitely if you're watching this video, go and look at emshade.com and see what, see what Emily's been building because it's really pretty impressive. Now reading some of your blogs earlier on, you also said that you'd taken the AWS exam for the associate course. And I was really wondering, do you find that useful in understanding lots of these things? Do you think it's, it's necessary for people starting out? What would you recommend? Yeah, so I think that the, uh, I took the associate essay cert, um, I think at the beginning of 2019. So that was, uh, once I've had about like kind of like six months in my role at AWS, a little bit of familiarity. I did my cloud practitioner pretty early on um, to get kind of an intro and like kind of like the, the business level uh, depth into to AWS services. So after I've had a little bit of exposure and a little bit of kind of being in, around it, um, then I took the study for, took the, the associate essay. Mm. And what I what I really appreciate about the the associate SA is um, they definitely added a ton of kind of serverless focused content, which is awesome for kind of those of us that are building serverless. Uh, and then uh, I think that what I like about it is that it really helps me kind of look at the whole picture of services that, that AWS has and be able to understand where things fit. Uh, so when like we announce a new service, for example, I'm able to kind of conceptualize and say, oh, I think that's related to these services and it might be interesting to use with these. And it um, kind of gives you that the, the big picture um, at like a, a level of depth, which I feel like is helpful once you're kind of at that point where you're a little bit comfortable with AWS but want to want to go further. Yeah, yeah. So when you learned the exam and you started building this, how many weeks or so did you get to to you suddenly have that aha moment of, wow, this is amazing. I've built something really cool. You know, you fight through a lot of problems. Then you sort of hit that point where you realize you've done something amazing. How long did it take? Um, I mean, because I've been building it over the past year or so. So I feel like there was probably like a, I think that there was, so I, I feel like I made the first Lambda was with CloudWatch events that was kind of tricking it daily. And then I think there was like a, a two or three month period where I was like working on the the public facing uh, website so that I could have like other people that are coming in and making it kind of this, like a service where um, it's not just me adding you to my SNS subscription. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I think that, uh, that that was really like when I had like a public facing thing that I could like, kind of invite my friends to that were that were interested in getting the emails. Uh, that was a huge step. Um, and I think there's been steps along the way where I say like, wow, like now I can have like this, this huge new functionality. Like uh, people have been asking for for traditional character support. And so that was that was really cool to be able to to just like roll out a, a new update. And I think that's, that's something that I've been um, learning over, like over the past year or so as I've been been doing a lot of, of app development is that it's actually a really uh, 
kind of empowering. If you think about, you go from <clears throat> a position of of really no background in technology, no kind of understanding of of how these things work, um, and then with just a couple of those kind of fundamental like tools and, and projects under your belt, you start to really look at things very differently. You have this uh, kind of access to this very like powerful new medium to to think creatively about problems and to to look at like kind of the services and apps that you're using and say uh, like oh I could build something like this or maybe like oh I wish they'd solve this like slightly differently and like maybe that's something that I could do and I feel like that's a, a mindset that you completely don't have if you haven't kind of dabbled in, in app development and so that's been a really cool thing yeah. that I hope other people have access to yeah and you mentioned earlier as well uh, Vue.js so you were started with JavaScript and you migrate, migrated to Vue how did you end up deciding to do that and choosing between that or React and how did that really change your development yeah, so I think that um, Vue, I definitely do rely on kind of uh, chatting with with folks around me. I mean, I happen to live in Seattle where there's a lot, like a really strong developer community. And um, and so I think that some of my, my initial tooling choices are just based on kind of the, the expertise that I like have access to. And like, I know, oh, somebody that was using Vue that uh, said it was really phenomenal and kind of helped me like point me to the right tutorials or, or whatever else. Um, and so I think that's how I landed with Vue. Um, but it's just been... Um, really excellent to kind of get going with with front end stuff. Uh, I think that the I feel super comfortable on the back end at this point. Like I feel like I just like when I get going with um, kind of like building stuff in Lambda or uh, using like Python and, and Sam together and all that. Um, I feel like very comfortable with that tool chain and those those services. Um, front end, I'm still trying to get comfortable with. <laughs> this JavaScript, I feel like I, I need a couple months of, of experience with before I feel like it's smooth. Yeah, yeah. And when you were playing with the back end, what point did you go from working in the console to figuring out that you wanted to use a framework like SAM to automate some of the development? Pretty fast. I think I, I mentioned uh, initially I had like that, just that little like uh, uh, API gate, uh, gate, a gateway endpoint. It was a web page that would give you like a random greeting. I think that one was still primarily in the console. Uh, but really, I think as I started to get into to bigger stuff with the, the Chinese daily vocab app, um, I think that that was when I started getting more into to frameworks, and I got uh, I've got CIC set up through through Circle CI, um, and I feel like that was just like extremely magical to go from like kind of poking away in the console and and uh, getting lost in versioning control to having this like really smooth pipeline where I hit get push in my editor and then suddenly it's it's live on my web page and doing exactly as it should be. Uh, I think that the getting the the right like tool chain in place is uh, really incredible to to experience <laughs> for the first time. So if you're just joining us, this is Emily Shea. She's a partner developer manager with AWS and has built some amazing websites and tools using serverless. I put the URL on the screen, it's emshea.com, where you can look at her blog and her applications and this amazing set of tools she's been building. I've been following for months, so that's what we're chatting about today. So if you're brand new at, at learning serverless, Emily, if I, I've got people who, who absolutely know nothing, they haven't coded before or anything, what's your recommendation to them about where to start? Yeah, so I think that uh, definitely the the kind of path that I've taken with starting out with building maybe like a really simple Lambda, in my case, it was with, within Python, um, and then maybe an API gateway endpoint. I feel like there's a lot of really creative things that you can do and a lot of good tutorials that are kind of at that level. Um, I also definitely started, I should mention, um, I started with static websites, uh, so I was just kind of like hosting websites out of out of S3. Um, that was probably like the the real beginning of kind of my my development with uh, AWS, and so I think that that's a really good place to to start. Also, I would definitely encourage people to uh, play around with your own ideas. I think that um, I get really bored with tutorials really fast. I'll go like halfway through and be like, ah, oh, I get enough of this and start kind of trying to build something. And when it breaks, come back to the tutorial. And, uh, but I think that having like a little bit of creativity and a little bit of like, oh, I love for to have a website that does this. Um, I think that that keeps you motivated. Uh, and so for, for like the Chinese daily vocab app, like I use that, my friends use that. Um, and so it keeps you motivated to say like, oh, like we're, we're still using this. It's still valuable to us. Let's let's add another feature on, or let's continue to build it. And uh, that keeps the the momentum up and your interest level up. Yeah, yeah. So I've got to ask then. So what's in the pipeline now? What are you going to build next on the Chinese vocab app? And what also what are you going to learn next? Yeah. So definitely, I mentioned that one of the next things on the roadmap that I really think would be valuable and, and pretty easy to implement is uh, currently you have the ability to go to the um, 
the like slash, slash history page that will show you the be able to review passwords that you've seen. Uh, and so it'd be I think it'd be pretty easy to add some some kind of auto generated quizzes uh, onto there. So you say, oh, show me like the last five words that I've seen and kind of scramble them up and help me kind of guess which one, which matches to which. Uh, so I think that would be pretty easy to add. Uh, one thing that I think would be a, a bit of a bigger jump that I do want to get to eventually is adding some um, kind of user profiles, sign in authentication, uh, just so that people can start to have a bit more of like a customized experience. Um, and then they can start to get stuff that's uh, maybe if they've seen the same word for a couple of days and they're really comfortable with it, they can start like kicking it out of their pile and start getting new words that are that are coming up. Um, and so I think that that's kind of the, the next big step uh, in terms of, of features that I want to add that's going to be um, add value, I think. Great. But it's honestly been inspiring to watch. So, I mean, we'll definitely we'll keep watching what you're building and hopefully you'll come back to us in a couple of months and show us some of the new things that you've added on. But it's been incredible to see how this has developed. So everyone, that's Emily Shea. Check out all of her work on emshea.com. And uh, my name's James Berzik. I'm a developer advocate for the AWS Serverless Group. I work for the Lambda team. So if you have any questions or topics you'd like to discuss, definitely send them to me. I'm here on Twitter at JBESW, or you can email me at uh, jbezik at amazon.com. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Everyone have a great weekend. Take care.